Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged News. This one's a little bit different. It's got one story that really caught my eye and a bit of an update, uh, which we recorded this week at the launch of a BP Charge Master 150 kilowatt charger. But that's coming later. So stay tuned, as they used to say in the old analog TV days. Now this story caught my eye on the electric, uh, electric car blog written by Fred Lambert. It's all about the cost of electric cars. Now, I hear this all the time and I think it's perfectly 100% legitimate that at the moment electric cars are more expensive to buy new than uh, petrol and diesel cars are to buy new. A couple of caveats, really important thing is there is now 80% of car ownership in the UK are leased cars, they don't buy them new. So when you see that a car costs £22,000 on the road, very, very few people pay £22,000 to have that car. They, they get it on a lease. I've got two cars, my wife's car and my car, and they're both leased. We don't own a car. Now, people in the car industry are very aware that this situation is going to change, that the cost of electric cars is going to come down. But I haven't actually heard any specific a date yet. There's a lot of hot debate about when it is that we will see price parity in new cars between petrol and diesel and electric. At the moment it's like that, but it's, it is doing that. There's no question. A VW executive in the United States has said very recently that the, the cost of electric vehicles is approaching price parity with gasoline vehicles, petrol cars, uh, and, this, and this will be an absolute tipping point in the industry. Reinhard Fischer, the senior vice president for the Volkswagen Group in North America, said, We strongly believe that the tipping point is near and that tipping point will be price equity. Now, he believes that Volkswagen's massive electric push will bring economies of scale and therefore reduce the price of a new electric Volkswagen car. Now, VW is currently investing billions to change its current electric vehicle production, which is a few thousand cars a year, to two to three million electric cars a year by 2025. Now, Reinhard Fischer said this, and I think this is a really interesting statement to come from the absolute top level of the Volkswagen Group. He said, once you overcome the fear of something new, the EV is a better choice for you. I don't think it's going to take a lot of convincing. There is a fundamental curiosity. Everybody sees the end state. When you put pencil to paper, owning a full electric vehicle costs about half what a gas car costs. I'm just translating this because most people know, but gas, it doesn't mean running off gas. It means petrol. It's gasoline, petroleum. Just saying that, just for clarity. Now that, you wonderful fully charged viewers, is I think a very important statement from one of the biggest car manufacturers in the world. We are rapidly approaching the tipping point. It's, I don't think it's going to be a tipping point. It's going to be a tipping curve. We haven't really got there yet, but it's very obvious that all around the world, the ramp up of electric vehicles is truly phenomenal. And the simple fact of the matter is the monthly cost of leasing an electric car and fueling it already makes electric vehicles cheaper than their petrol and diesel distant relatives, especially if you can charge your car cheaply at home on off-peak rate electricity on a cheaper tariff. Now, what happens if you can't do that? As I have said many times, and it's a very common piece of knowledge, 40% of UK households don't have anywhere off the street to charge a car, which does mean 60% of the UK population currently could have an electric car with enormous ease. But let's leave that to one side. What about that 40%? That's a fairly sizable chunk. We need solutions so that people who live in cities, that people who've only got on-street parking, can use electric cars. And so I went along to see a, real, a thing that's going to become really common, really common in cities and in the rural areas, and that is more rapid chargers in very easy to find locations. Over to Robert Llewellyn on the road. So we've been very kindly loaned this uh, Jaguar I-Pace to test out a new rapid charger that's just been installed, literally gone online today, to see how, how fast it charges and how easy it is to use. This is a BP Chargemaster 150 kilowatt rapid charger with touch to pay. Oh, oh, it's like a dream come true. No membership, no joining, no nothing, no special card, no special app. You're paying for the electricity. I'll find out how much. I'm sure it's not going to be dirt cheap, but it's the convenience and the reliability. And here's the other thing that I think is very important. You're driving along the road in your electric car in an area you don't know 
and you've got to find a charger for it. Where do you look for a charger? Obviously, if you're a regular electric car driver, you know things like ZapMap, like uh, Open Charge Map. There's places that tell you all the places that you can charge. Often the car will have it logged into its sat-nav. But if you're in an area you don't know and you see a gas filling station, a petrol station, as we would call them in this country, and you know that there's going to be a rapid charger on the site, you don't have to do anything. You just pull in, like I am now, into a garage. There's a queue, because often people who buy fossil fuels have to queue up to get them. That's quite often forgotten. Uh, there's quite a bad queue, this one. <laughs> I think that's perfect. That is peachy that we're stuck in a queue for fossil fuel. What it is, there's a sign here, big green sign that says EV charging. Now, that's not something you ever expected to see in a garage forecast. I'm going to have to wait. I can't get through. This is even better. I'm going to wait in the shade because it's quite a hot day today. So I've got to wait for people. And what I've done, oh no, this was really unintentional. What I've done is I've parked my car in front of a petrol pump which means that someone with a petrol car can't use it. A little bit like when someone with a petrol car parks the car in front of an electric car charger. So here it is. This is the, uh, the first of BP Charge Master's rollout of 150 kilowatt chargers, which are fitted with tap to pay. Now I know because this is an eye pace, I've got to get quite near because <laughs> the charger's on the side. And you can tell from that beeping, that is me very close to it. So I've got to get as near as I can so I can get there. Oh, turn the car off when you open the door. Sorry. <laughs> Tap to pay. Oh. oh, CCS. There we go. Now then. Oh, perfect. Take out the CCS plug. Shove it in. <gasps> Hasn't gone green yet. It's ramping up. Oh. <laughs> it's gone green. Yes. I love it when it goes green. So I think the important thing about the, the rollout of these charges is it's normal. It's becoming normal. We're at a, a filling station in West London. This is the first of these 150 kilowatt charges they're putting in. And it's in a really recognizable, easy to find location. It's not a charger that's tucked behind a town hall or to the side of a swimming pool in a car park or outside a hotel. It's in a filling station with a shop with loos, you know, it, right there. So all those things are normal. And that, as these things appear, more people are going to see that it is possible to drive an electric car. In fact, we've, people from Charge Master have said they've had people come already to ask what it is because it's got these big posters up. Uh, a time to take charge with 150 kilowatts. So the thing about 150 kilowatts is it's basically future proof. I mean, this car can take 100 kilowatts, but only if it's nearly empty. And that's the thing about charging. It's not the same as pumping fuel into a tank. This car was half full. It's probably getting about 55, 60 kilowatts at the moment, and that will ramp down as it fills up. So the 150 kilowatts is obviously for certain new cars that are now built to take that, the Audi e-tron is a good example, can take 150 kilowatts pretty much for the entirety of its charge. It's the way the cars are built. Um, and it's not just going to be in the London or the southeast. They're rolling the, these out. Their plan is for them to put around about 100 of these chargers around the country. Scotland, Wales, the north of England, the southwest, in, uh, between now and Christmas of 2019. So really, really soon. How do you pay for it? So if you're a subscriber to the uh, Charge Master, you've got a Polar card, and you pay the monthly subscription, this costs... The poor old fool couldn't remember that it costs 20p a kilowatt hour if you are a Polar Plus subscriber. <sighs> Less. Now, I've got to remember all the numbers. Okay, so if you use a tap to pay, it costs 40p a kilowatt hour. And people go, why? That's really expensive. How often do you use it? You use it when you really need it. And you have all the advantages of an electric car which includes not paying for petrol, which is much more expensive per mile than even when you're paying 40p a kilowatt hour. That's my argument. You don't use this all the time. If this is the only way you charge your car, then you really need to get a subscription with someone like the Polar Network so that it's cheaper. So it's, it does cost 40p a kilowatt hour, but it's so easy. Anyone can use it. It's like buying a bag of crisps. Beep, on it goes, plug it in, it starts charging. But when you need it, this sort of stuff is vitally important, reliable, easy to find, easy to use. Those three things are really crucial and I think they've got it right. You drive up to it, tap your card on it, 
plug the car in, it's charging. That's all you need. And then you go and get a coffee. Or use the gentleman's facilities, which I'm going to do now. And then the lovely man from EV Maps on the Twitters turned up in his brand new Tesla Model 3 and of course it was much easier to see what the charge rate was inside the car. We plugged it in and immediately it jumps up to 100 kilowatts which is 457 miles of range in an hour of charging. And in the time it took to do this, it added a mile. Well, that's all I've got time for. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'd like to thank Jaguar for lending us the iPACE. I do love driving that car. It is an amazing piece of engineering. Okay, yes, it's a little bit electron thirsty. It likes to chunder through its enormous battery at rather a large and alarming rate, but it is an absolutely amazing car to drive. I mean, it is a performance vehicle. It's not a long range economy electric vehicle. It's a performance kind of sports SUV. That's what it's designed to be. And it's road holding, it's handling, it's brakes, it's acceleration are all brilliant. So I love it. It just uses rather a lot of electricity. Um, I'd like to thank them. I'd like to thank uh, BP Charge Master for giving us access to their, uh, not quite exclusive, but nearly exclusive access to their first 150 kilowatt charger, hundreds of them being installed as we speak. Um, I would also very much like to thank our Patreon supporters, who I'm thanking right now, uh, using our new regime of thanking Patreon supporters. We could not do this show without you. Occasionally we get accusations on Twitter that we're doing like paid PR for Porsche when we did the Porsche episode. No, no, as if we would take money from a car manufacturer. Imagine what all the others would say if we did. We can't. It's just not happening. It does not happen. We have to raise money in any way we can. Patreon is the base of what is this whole show is built on. It's really vitally important. That's all. As always, please subscribe and have a look at the Patreon link beneath this uh, episode. And as always, if you have been, thank you so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.